to here so I'm going to start right along there and I'll start putting in some dark colors that were going to be possibly this foliage that's stuck down here. We can come back in and put the highlights on it later but right now we'll just we'll keep it real dark assuming that there's no there's no light coming from the inside of it. It just, it just starts and gives us a bed and a position of where this stuff is. Also we're going to have a fence coming along here so that fence line is more than likely going to have some little weeds and some of these warm little little uh, weeds and, and flowers and stuff that's coming up in front of it. So we'll keep that fairly loose right there. Just for positioning, that's where it's all going to be. And we can change the colors a little bit to lighten it up to get a little bit of a highlight on it here and there. So you can kind of see where it's going. The fun in, in this stuff is, is getting it to a point where you start doing the final touches. And uh, the final touches really, really bring a spark to it. You can just sparkle the end of it there. Just get rid of something there. I also want to come back here again and do some trees here in the background that give a little bit more shape. And these will have more, a little bit more contrast on. So I will put these right, right behind this barn. Have, have them come out right behind this barn and just to the start of that little meadow there. So that's going to be your, your little trees. And there again, all that does is add a separate, another little layer. By adding that other little layer, you increase the, the depth of field again. And uh, the positioning, you see where things, where things are and the air that's between them. It just lays it back and puts another, another level in between you and the background. Do the same thing on the other side for a little bit of balance. You don't want to get everything perfectly balanced. That's why if you notice this thing's a little off center. We want to, want to keep things just a bit off center like that. Just for the eye. It's a little bit more pleasing to the eye if you keep them off center as, as opposed to uh, completely symmetrical. A little green, a little purple, and a little blue. We get into the dark undersides of, these, of this little pine tree that's sitting here. I'll come back in before we're over here and I'll uh, throw some shadows in there and we'll get some good light on that pine tree also. I'm going to add some shadows off of this stuff, which would be a little bit more purple than I have them there. A little bit of white, a little bit of purple, a little bit of blue. Start to get a little chroma value in there with nice little bright shadows. Because shadows aren't all dark. Shadows, again, are a reflection of everything that's around them. You know, when we had this whole barn here and I started to show you that there were some cracks in it and things, you're going to want to start thinking that there's a lot more little cracks rather than just big ones. There's some other little cracks in there and we're going to drop those, some of those in there right now to show that this barn is kind of old and falling apart. May have a section over here that's missing some boards. Very easy to easy to paint against to those missing boards in there. Just little flecks here and there to tell the story. Those missing boards, you'll be looking right inside on, on the other, other side of this, of this barn, looking through to the inside. Just a few, a few black marks indicate that and fool the eye. We'll start working all around this thing now and try to build up some of these, the, the gates and the other little things are here. And we come back in and work on individual little, little areas right now. But right now we're at the point in this painting where we want to start establishing the things that are really there. So we know there's a fence going to be right here. That fence is going to be a strong, strong silhouette against the, the background in the snow. So we'll take a little black and a little brown. We'll build this old board fence here not made out of round cedar logs, it'll be made out of flat board and they're all uneven because they're old and weathered. 
being uneven, they're a lot more fun and easy to paint because you can't really make any mistakes on it. This isn't machine lumber. And by doing that again, we talked about different levels and layers. Look, look what putting a fence does to this area right here. It makes this area move out into the, into the foreground and moves everything else behind it because you're looking at a dark, a light, a dark and a light, and you're stepping it all the way back and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers which progressively go back. And the more you can attempt that, and the more you can get that in, the more you, you establish that the, the eye sees a distance. These fences were all put together, sometimes very haphazardly and sometimes very clean, but generally they're not built for beauty. They're meant to keep livestock in or just to fence off property or something. So we'll get the shape going to that fence. Throw a little bit more brighter color into certain areas of it just to give it a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of an interest. By doing that, we'll keep we'll continue it down on this area here because here we've got a gate. I'll put the gate in in a middle in a minute, but right now we'll just continue some of this fence down here. flecks of, of darkness in there that will show that there's some bushes there which we can throw a little color in in a minute. Then there's going to be some old iron fence which is maybe kind of blue-gray color which you'll see here and it's kind of rusted in areas but I don't want to get it too rusty against this rust colored background. So we'll just do this with it right now to start it to get a to get a shape of it and then we can fiddle with the colors in it in a minute. But just by doing this it kind of shows you that there is a, a rusty old iron fence, iron gate there. And we can mess with that a little bit more in just a minute or two. I need to drop a little bit more black in here. I just there's just something I don't much care for here. I just want to set this back a little bit. And you know that's why I say take a photograph for reference but you certainly don't have to live and die by the photograph that you take or by what your eye sees if you're out painting outside. You can look at something and you'll always see something that, you know what I'd like to make that a little bit more irregular or make it more regular or make it just make, make changes and things. Don't be afraid to change it. Mother Nature doesn't mind. The, uh, the fun part of this stuff, as I said, if we start, we can start playing with little colors here. And if you take this wonderful little purple, which is a great warm little highlight color, and just snap it here and there, like I'm doing now. If it's just snapped in here and there, it just makes all those little shadows bounce. The more you can do that, the more interest you're going to get in that. You take the purple, which is, and make that a kind of a warm purple. And you can take the blue and make a, a kind of a bright little blue with a little bit of purple in it and pop that back in there too. Not quite dark enough. Put that blue back in there. There again you start to see these little, little, little blocks of color interest in things that maybe shouldn't happen. But it gives you a little, little shadow look, a little shadow feel. You get a little, little bit more stuff going on. That's what makes it more fun. I'm going to warm up some of these boards a little bit. To add just a little bit more, a little bit more color interest right down through here. Like it's maybe some little snow flowers and, and things of that nature down there. Anything just makes little sparkles are really, really kind of fun. I also, at this point, want to want to take some of these boards and just. Add a little bit of little bit of color and a little strength, and you know there's no rules. You can use your fingers too. So I'm just I'm just trying to get a little smear of color here and there on some of these boards to give them a little bit more contrast, especially over here on the side where I'm against a darker wall. Remember we talked a little bit about uh, 
how these weeds are here and I just laid down the background for these weeds and when I did the lay the background down I only laid it down as a as a dark color well we can take a little brush like this a little fan brush and just pop these little weeds in like that like there's some highlights in them and just by doing that it just kind of makes those those little weeds sparkle the same fan brush can be used with a little bit of green, the highlights uh, for these trees in the background, in the near but near background, not in the far background, but just by using a horizontal stroke like that, you start adding little feathers and highlights that may be in these little pines right here. You carry some of the color back down through there, and at that point, even the shadows, more, some more shadows, more shapes down in the foreground to interest you, to get this little bit more interest in this dead foreground. Now we're only, we're only going a little bit down here. When I take the tape off, you'll see that it's, it's not, not as, uh, as, as much as we'd like in the foreground. So we just want to lay a little bit of interest, like the snow is flowing, little things are going on down here. Coming back, back through here on this little, this little metal fence. If we pop just a few little little snaps on this little metal fence, it really gives the illusion of, of some light on top of it. And also, if it's a metal fence, it's probably going to have some rust spots on it, isn't it? So let's, let's try to warm up a couple of these things so it may, maybe it'll have a little, few little rusty looking spots. So it certainly looks, makes, it, makes it look different than the wood fence that's next to it. And you always have a chance to come back here at any given time and to snap up some of these contrasting lines. For instance, on the, on the cabin where we, take the, we make the separation between the, between the trees and the cabin. Get this separation really, really crisp and sharp. Just a little, few little snaps of that makes it work fine. And you'll probably have a nice little highlight right down the end of this. There and then on this side also. The one other thing that I want to add in here is a little bit more interest in the texture of this wall with all the light shining on it here. It's getting a little bit, a little bit too glowy for me. I like to knock this back just a little bit and get a little, little texture going here. So it looks more like more like wood. It may look like old, old, old wood, which is what it is. So basically what you have here is a is a 30 minute painting. Now these 30 minute quick draw demonstrations are, are really not meant to be finished paintings that you would say, wow, that's a, that's, you know, but what it is, is, is a demonstration to show how you shouldn't be afraid to throw some paint and have some fun with it and keep your brush wet. And especially if you're working in gouache like this, if you do something you don't like, you can change it right now. It, it, you can change it immediately. The most revealing thing and the most fun thing to do on this is really when you start taking this tape off and start giving shape to what you have just finished. You can take this tape off, which immediately tears, and thank goodness we have a mat for it. But as you pull this tape off, you'll reveal the, really the shape of the painting. Then all you do is snap it into a frame and you've got Quick Draw, the 30-minute painting. I'm Mike Miller and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.